Hello friends, this is Dr. Ipshita Ghosh, Consultant Endocrinologist practicing in Kolkata. Today I'll be discussing a very interesting and a fascinating case attending my clinic. The reason behind discussing this case is mainly to highlight the need for combination therapy and the importance of clinical inertia. Martina, a 52-year-old female, started on metformin and made lifestyle changes nine months ago when she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. In the first three months, her HbA1c decreased from 8.7 to 8% and she lost around 3 kgs. At six months, her HbA1c was 7.6 and she lost 1 kg more. The metformin dose was increased and she is back today at our clinic at nine months. So what we get from the patient's history is that she is type 2 diabetic for nine months and she is hypothyroid. Her social in- history includes that she lives independently and exercises five to six days a week. On physical examination, her BMI was found to be 32 kg per meter square, that is she is obese. She lost around 2.5 kgs in the past three months. Her BP was around 120-70 millimeter mercury and heart rate was around 85 beats per minute. Uh, she was put on metformin 1000 gram twice a day and levothyroxine 100 microgram. And a laboratory investigation showed her HbA1c was around 7.6% three months back, eGFR was normal, LDL was around 80 mg per deciliter, HDL was 34, and TG was around 150 mg per deciliter. Thyroid profile was also normal. So, intensification of treatment should not be delayed for patients with type 2 diabetes who are not meeting treatment goals. Martina feels guilty about not being able to control her glycemic profile. Early initiation of combination therapy has been proposed as an approach to number one, to achieve glycemic goals earlier, number two, to postpone therapeutic clinical inertia, number three, is to delay deterioration of glycemic control, and number four, is to potentially preserve beta cell function. So. Consider dual therapy in patients with newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes and early initiation of combination therapy, especially if HbA1c is greater than or equal to 1.5% above the glycemic target. According to the ADA and the ACE guidelines, Martina should be put on dual therapy immediately. So, what are the rationale for a combination treatment in type 2 diabetes? Type 2 diabetes is characterized by multiple metabolic defects and it's a progressive disease. So there is a need to potentially preserve beta cell function. And there is also limited efficacy of single drug and lack of durable response with initial monotherapy. So with lower HbA1c level, it means risk reduction of microvascular complication. And again, glucotoxicity. What does that mean? hyperglycemia begets hyperglycemia. So these are the main reasons why we should consider combination therapy in type 2 diabetes. Now what is medication failure in type 2 diabetes and what are the findings of the ADOPT trial? Therapies with metformin, sulfonylurea or insulin improve glycemic control in the short term but do not prevent progressive islet beta cell failure or long term deterioration of glycemia. So 15% with rosiglitazone, 21% with metformin and 34% with gliburide had medication failure at 5 years with monotherapy, that is. So this was the finding of the ADOPT trial. So we can conclude that this does not mean Martina failed in treating her disease. Now my second point, what is clinical inertia? Clinical inertia is defined as lack of treatment intensification due to clinicians fear of hypoglycemia and or weight gain, so leading to significant proportion of population to remain in poorly controlled glycemia. A recent retrospective cohort study showed that on average in patients with HbA1c greater than 7%, it took three years to intensify treatment from one to two OLEs. Early glycemic control leads to better outcomes that, that we all know, including a reduction in long-term macrovascular or microvascular complications. And for patients with inadequate glycemic control on metformin, addition of a single pill might be considered to help establish optimal glycemic control. 
while reducing pill burden and avoiding clinical inertia in intensifying therapy. So where metformin is not suitable and empagliflozin or linagliptin is being considered as an alternative first-line treatment, initial combination therapy may be considered to achieve target more quickly, particularly in patients with 1.5% higher than target ADD1C level. According to the ADA 2020 guideline, treatment goal involves control of glycemia, previous risk management, and a patient-centered approach to care. The choice of pharmacological agents now take account of comorbidities in addition to the risk of hypoglycemia, impact on weight, cost, potential for side effects, and patient references. Clinical evidence shows that an SGLT2 inhibitor and a DPP4 inhibitor combination is an effective option for management of type 2 diabetes, providing HB1C reduction of 1.1% to 1.5% and a weight reduction of approximately 2 kgs when added to metformin, which is considered as a first-line therapy. This combination has a promise of cardiovascular benefit with positive efficacy data on empagliflozin and a consistent cardiovascular safety data. And DPP-4 inhibitors have a neutral effect on atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease when added to standard care. In another phase three randomized trial investigating efficacy and safety of empagliflozin and lenagliptin, better tolerability was observed in subjects who are on empalina combination than those on alone empagliflozin in terms of serious adverse events hypoglycemia, and genital infections. This fact implies that Empalina add-on to metformin constitutes equal or even better tolerability than monotherapy with additive glycemic efficacy in uncontrolled patients. Thank you very much.